My name is Jeffrey Glassberg, and I am the director of the Sickle Cell Program at Mount Sinai. Hi, I'm Charlene Jacobs. I'm the nurse practitioner at Mount Sinai Hospital's Adult Sickle Cell Program. Yes, absolutely. We do believe that patients with sickle cell disease should receive the COVID-19 vaccine. Um, living with sickle cell disease does put you at increased risk for um, adverse effects due to COVID-19. So we do believe protecting you against getting the virus is of utmost importance. No, none of the vaccines have any COVID virus in them. There are three different vaccines. Um, two of them have something called mRNA in it, which is closest to a sugar um, in its form. Um, and so there's absolutely no virus in that, in those vaccine. Those vaccines tell your body to make some proteins that will help you fight off the virus. And then the third vaccine from Johnson & Johnson has an adenovirus, which is a common cold virus it's very safe and it cannot replicate inside your body. And it also helps your body um, make the uh, response it needs to fight off the COVID virus. So we believe that all of the vaccines are equally good. And I would recommend this to my patients and, and my family that um, any one of the vaccines is, uh, is completely fine. <clears throat> I know that you may hear on the internet and on the news that there's different efficacy numbers, but the truth is if you wait about six weeks from the first dose of your vaccine, all of them do a fantastic job and there's really no difference between one or the other. So all three of the vaccines are incredibly safe and incredibly effective. Um, they all protect you 100% from severe disease or having a dangerous outcome from your COVID-19. Um, and the, the different vaccines have slightly different numbers about how well they protect you from getting COVID that causes symptoms at all. <clears throat> um, the first two mRNA uh, vaccines, the Pfizer and the Moderna have, have efficacy numbers around 95%, which means that um, uh, you're very unlikely to get the virus at all. Um, and then the Johnson & Johnson vaccine has slightly lower efficacy, but that was mostly because they started looking very soon after people got the vaccine. If, you, if, you, if they had waited um, and only counted COVID infections five or six weeks after people got vaccinated, all three of them actually have basically the same efficacy, well above 90%, meaning there's almost no chance that you would get COVID at all. And there basically is 100% protection from getting very sick with the disease. So some of the typical side effects of the vaccine could be um, flu-like symptoms. Um, and that usually happens after the second dose of the uh, two mRNA vaccines. And that includes, you know, um, fever, body aches, chills um, are common side effects that you probably will feel afterwards. Um, some people do feel headaches too. Um, the few patients that I know who have gotten the vaccine already, have um, experienced some mild pain, but they have not reported to the hospital to treat that pain, and they were able to treat it at home. I'll tell you, my arm hurt, but it was like a, a warm hug from the pharmaceutical company knowing that the vaccine was inside my body protecting me, and the pain went away. <laughs> I got it down, so. Yes. And I would say it lasted about, I had um, a sore arm on the first, um, um, dose, but the second dose I did experience a flu-like um, symptoms, but it only lasted for about 24 hours. So I would say that the few patients, you know, this vaccine is not has not been readily available to our patients just until recently, but the few that I've spoken to, and not many, it's only probably two or three people did have some mild pain afterwards and they needed to take their home medications to treat it. 
Not a full crisis. Not a full crisis, just mild pain at home, you know, body, you know, sore arm um, also. Yes, we do think that patients with sickle cell disease, if they had COVID in the past, they should receive it. Um, actually, if they had it, um, they should not get the vaccine if they had the uh, virus within um, 90 days. But yes, we do believe so because we're not sure how long their immunity lasts after they get that vaccine, after they get COVID-19 rather. And I will add that if you've had COVID, it does protect you from getting infected again, but not perfectly. Mm -hmm. And these vaccines produce a very reliable, very strong response much better than an infection with COVID. So even if you've had COVID, you'll be protecting yourself way more. If yes. You vaccine. So if, you, if you're pregnant and you have sickle cell disease, um, hopefully you're the, under the care of a specialist obstetrician who's taking care of your pregnancy. And basically our recommendation is that you should think of yourself like any other patient of that doctor. So if, if your specialist obstetrician who's taking care of the pregnancy says you should get the vaccine, then yes, proceed. And if they recommend against it for some reason related to the pregnancy, then wait and, and, and get the vaccine when they recommend it. But as far as having sickle cell, there's no reason to wait. Um, it really just relates to the pregnancy and whether your, your specialist doctor recommends it. Definitely not. Um, so I think people hear a lot of stuff, especially about the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines, about RNA and DNA. Will this stuff get into my genes? Will it change my, um, my DNA? Um, is it gonna change me? Um, the answer, Simply, the answer is no, absolutely not. But um, we've done a lot uh, to look into this and, and how these, these vaccines work. These are not the first mRNA vaccines. Um, for decades of research has been done on vaccines made this way. And so we do know a lot about what they do and how they work. And basically, they uh, go into the muscle cells in your arm and they give your, your muscle cells some instructions about how to make some protein. And after about a day, the stuff that was in the vaccine is all gone. It just gets de degraded into a little pieces of sugar and, and is just gone. So um, your body will make a little bit of protein for a while and that'll help you uh, get set up to fight off COVID, but there will be no changes to you because of this vaccine. And then the Johnson & Johnson vaccine is, you know, a good old fashioned um, uh, vaccine similar to many, many others um, in the past made out of adenovirus. And that, again, that does not get into your DNA. It, it um, just gives uh, your body um, a template for what it needs to attack if COVID comes. And, and then it just gets degraded and, and, and leaves the body. My understanding is absolutely there's there's no reason um, mm -hmm. to uh, withhold the vaccine. Uh, certainly, um, the vaccine should not get into breast milk. Um, but again, this is uh, more of a question for the pregnancy doctors, the obstetricians. Um, they, I'm, I'm sure, have have their own recommendations. But um, I would say absolutely proceed. So the answer here is kind of, um, once you're vaccinated and, and I mean fully vaccinated, meaning uh, if you're taking Pfizer or Moderna, you've had your second dose and you waited two weeks, or if you had Johnson & Johnson, that you've waited six weeks is my recommendation from getting Johnson & Johnson, you're fully protected. Um, and so if you're around other people who are vaccinated and the CDC supports this too, that you can hang out in small groups and not be vaccinated, uh, uh, I'm sorry, and not be masked and not be socially distanced. So you, you can have gatherings with other vaccinated people and um, basically pretend that COVID is just a memory. Um, when you're out in public, 
we still recommend that you wear your mask and you, and you keep your distance from people because there's still just that small chance that um, you could, even though you can't get sick, maybe you could spread it to others um, in, a, in very rare situations. So um, while we try to get the pandemic to sort of cool off, we still recommend that when you're in public, you follow all the same rules as people who haven't had the vaccine yet. But for private gatherings, um, you know, it's, it's time to, uh, to move forward from, from lockdown. Basically, the COVID-19 vaccine is being practically rationed by the state and the city. So it has, there's limited quantity that is coming to Mount Sinai Hospital. However, you're able to um, go to New York City or nyc.gov and find a vaccination center near you. Um, and that's what we do recommend at this point because, um, you know, all hospitals are getting limited supply and it's unknown on how frequently we will get supply of the COVID-19 vaccine. Um, so we do encourage you to try to get it through the state or the Department of Health or through New York City.